In this season of Easter, we begin our worship with a thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with love. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. We hope you'll join in our opening hymn. Let us pray. Almighty God, with joy, we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
A reading from 1 John. Listen for the word of the Lord. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. The life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Throughout the 50 days of the season of Easter, we have a rainbow theme. And we're actually starting um, at the inside of the rainbow and working out. So this week, our color is purple. And part of my inspiration was a book from 1961 from my childhood, Hailstones and Halibut Bones. Um, The subtitle um, is Adventures in Color. So throughout this 50 days, each week, we're going to invite you to be curious about what a color might communicate. I joked this past weekend on Easter about Cindy Lauper and her song, Let Your True Colors Show. But you'll see that this week we're looking at purple or violet. Purple is such a curious color. It's the color of royalty, subsequently the crown. But do you see there in the middle, it's also the color of being bruised. The Christ we follow, the risen Christ is both. Both royalty, but the one who's willing to be bruised. And actually that bird above the crown is a, um, a purple peacock of sorts. And then there's violets and grapes and the purple sky. We enjoy that purple mountain majesty here in Colorado. But in each week, um, there's parts of a poem from here I'm going to read to you. And so I invite you to um, hear poetry as another um, connection, sometimes even our psalms, um, which begins with P also, you might think of as poetry. I'm just going to read you part of this poem of what is purple. Time is purple, just before night, when most people turn on the light. But if you don't, it's a beautiful sight. Asters are purple, there's purple ink. Purple's more popular than you think. It's sort of a great grandmother to pink. There are purple shadows and purple veils. There's purple jam and purple gel. And a purple bruise, next day will tell where you landed when you fell. The purple feeling is rather put out. The purple look is a definite pout. But the purple sound is the loveliest thing. It's a violet opening in the spring. I invite you to be curious about the color purple. Also throughout these 50 days of Easter, we will be reading as our first reading sections of the first um, first John. And so I just encourage you, it's a short um, book towards the end of your Bible, just before Revelations, you have first, second, and third John. And it only has five chapters. 
Um, I'll be curious um, to see if any of you will take on that challenge. Consider reading First John along with us and filling in those blanks. Some of that First John reading is very familiar to those of us who remember about confession. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So part of purple can be about letting go of needing to hold on to those parts of us that indeed are bruised and we trust in this risen Christ. So in the manner of our children um, and our children's message, I invite you to take your hands to fold them and repeat after me as we pray. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for purple. Thank you for purple. Red and blue brought together. Red and blue brought together. For beauty and majesty. For beauty and majesty. And to remind us. And to remind us. That even when we are bruised. That even when we are bruised. By your love. By your love. We are blessed. We are blessed. We pray this. We pray this. In Jesus' most precious name. In Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please pray with me. through the beauty of nature, through the revelation of your love in creation, in our communities, in our connections, in words, in music, in your holy scripture, we keep coming to know you and trust you. We ask now that in this season, our eyes might be opened even wider and our hearts made larger to let in the love of your risen and crucified son. In his most precious name, we pray. Amen. So when I thought of 
all the colors of the rainbow. And that first promise we hear when Jesus promises to Noah and his descendants, and we take that promise for ourselves as well, that never again will the whole earth be flooded or destroyed. I thought about all the different ways in this season of Easter, we can be curious about colors. Creation is so amazing. Earlier in March, I took a class and one of the things we learned in the class is the variety of emotions that different colors can evoke. Sometimes it's the same color that can evoke a positive or a negative emotion. Well, purple is one of my favorite colors. When I was 17 years old, one of my hobbies, well, I brought together two hobbies, was tie dyeing. I loved tie dyeing things and sewing. And I made myself this quilt and it looked sort of like waves. I made three sections. One was purple, one was green and one was blue. It was a beautiful quilt. And then I decided to do something creative. I hope in this season of Easter, you might get creative with color, but creativity doesn't always work out the way you thought it would. Well, back in that day as a 17 year old, I had one of the little um, things you could um, create with little studs. So you could do little rhinestones. And I thought, oh my goodness, this will be the most amazing quilt. I'll put a very thin um, layer inside and then I can make it sparkle. It took lots and lots and lots of rhinestones. It was beautiful to look at. But in an experimental way, one thing I had not considered, maybe you remember back in the rhinestone kinds of days, they're rough. Those little diamond shaped rhinestones, when you put them on a quilt, you've got kind of smooth kind of metal on one side, but you've got this kind of odd, sharp little diamond thing on the other side. It was beautiful, but absolutely useless to actually put on your bed because you wouldn't want to sit on it because then you were sitting on these sharp little diamond things. I think eventually I put it on the wall for a while. It went by the wayside, but we learn by practicing. And something that was beautiful on the outside didn't serve its purpose. We remember that in this season we've just come through, purple is the color of Lent of that journey of Jesus in his life and ministry. They were awaiting royalty and purple is the color of royalty. But the king that Jesus came as was a king who would be crucified, both and. Both powerful and willing to sacrifice. Purple is both the color of beautiful things and the color of bruises. It sometimes speaks to maybe what's going on inside of us. So as you're curious this week, maybe about your own strengths, but maybe also about your fears. Thomas often gets a bad rap, but doesn't it take a certain connection and willingness to ask for that sign himself, to want to see it with his own eyes. And even as Jesus says, blessed are those who have not seen and have come to believe, Jesus met Thomas exactly where he was with his doubts and his fears. Thomas, Thomas was both blessed and doubting. The disciples were locked away for fear and excited to see the risen and the risen Christ. So as we look at purple, what a great combination of red and blue. What will this world be like when we stop dividing ourselves and see the true colors that God has for us to allow ourselves to be both blessed and know that we're broken? 
as we hear in those parts of that confession from 1 John. Purple also made me think of power, property, prestige. That's the royalty, if you're watching The Crown or some of the other shows that are very popular now about what a monarchy or a royal family might look like. Jesus turns that other side down. He calls us beloved. And sometimes we experience that most deeply when we're able to admit that we indeed are broken and so in need of God's love. May this season be that both and season for you of seeing the beauty, but entering also into those places of your own doubts and fears, knowing that Jesus will meet you exactly there. Amen. We invite you to join in singing our hymn of the day. Walk by faith and not by sight, with gracious words draw near. O Christ who spoke as none ever spoke, my peace be with you here. We may not touch your hands and side, nor follow where you but in your promise we rejoice, my cry, my Lord and God. Help then, O oh Lord, our unbelief, and may our faith abound to call on you when you are near and seek where you are found. found in means divine beneath the water and the word beneath the bread and wine and when our life of faith is done in realms of clearer light may we behold you as you with full and endless sight. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. You shower your church with grace, O God. Unite the whole church on earth so that with one heart it testifies to the resurrection of Jesus Christ with power and love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You proclaim the blessing of life forevermore, like dew upon the mountains. Refresh your creation, restore waters, cleanse the air, and provide revitalizing moisture to parched land. Give your whole creation the promise of new life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You direct the nations, O God, guide all in authority, that they shepherd their peoples in the ways of your love. Defeat in us our impulse to war. Bestow the peace of Christ upon those in authority and breathe upon them the Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You place within the heart of the church a spirit of sharing Give us the power of your generous spirit that we provide for the needs of others as we offer up prayers for those who are afraid or confused, doubting or in fear, those who are sick or suffering, those who are dying, 
and those who grieve. Today, we offer up prayers for Peter Wright, Chloe, Caleb and his parents, the Ryan family at Nancy's passing, Sarah McComb, Tony Hayes Jr., Sarah Braun, Mary Stegmuller, Michael Patterson, the Maxwell family, Arlene and Ron, Stephen Braun and family, Marlene Olson, Chuck Grote, Andrew Ike, Jan Nupp, Linda Krabenhoff, Judy Dionese, Ginger Velasic, Carol Groves, Mindy Brune, Romeo White, Bus and Carrie, Gary and Kay Schritter, Barry Amon, Kathy Mulqueen and family, Brian Fluger, Heather Harrington, Michael Bax and Teresa Quick, Connie, Lisa, Ashley, Cameron, Asher. For these and those we now name or hold in the silence of our hearts. Announce your peace to those who are lonely, hurting, suffering, or afraid. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You give us fellowship with one another in this faith community. Shine the light of the risen Christ in our life together so that we lo live in love for one another and our joy may be complete. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, praying through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We invite you to go and share that peace in the world, be that peace, Find all those ways to make signs and live as people of peace. Please pray with me. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Trusting God deeply, we pray together that prayer which our Lord Jesus has taught us, addressing God in this most intimate way. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We invite you to join in singing our hymn. Receive these words of blessing to walk with you this week. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Bless you now and forever. Amen. During this season, we'd love to see your pictures of rainbows and check out our website, website to find out all the current announcements. Jesus wanted his followers to be united and to remember that Jesus's love would be with them always. And so it was on the very night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven given for you. Take and eat. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he blessed it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood given and shed for you and for all people 
for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. This is the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation shed for you. Take and drink. And now, may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace to love, serve, and grow. Thanks be to God, and we will.